Good morning. Let us rise in spirit and sing God Beyond All Names using the insert in our bulletin. We will sing this twice. Good morning, all. I'm Amelia Richardson Dress. I'm one of the pastors here at UCC Longmont, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it is a joy to welcome each of you here this morning, along with Reverend Pedro, along with our music team, our AV volunteers, our child care staff, our building staff, so many people that come together to just uh, create a space where we can experience God's belovedness and then go out into the world to live that in a new way. We are beginning a sermon series this morning called Why Church? As in, why do we show up on Sunday mornings when we could be out somewhere else? Why do we join online or even watch later? And so with that question in mind, take a moment to think about what it is that brought you here uh, now, and that now might be uh, whenever you are watching, if you are watching this later. What is it that brings you here? And as that comes to your mind or to your heart, we're just going to pause a moment to notice that. That question, what is it that brings you here, speaks to our longings. What is it that we are longing for in this place and in this time? Will you pray with me? God, for all of the longings that are in our hearts this morning, we ask that you hear them, that you know them, and that you meet them the same way that you meet each of us here. And so we hold a space, a space of pause, a space of quiet, just to hear what you might be saying to us this morning. For all these things and the things we have not yet even recognized, we lift up to you. Amen. Today's service is an intergenerational service on Communion Sundays. We uh, intentionally craft a space where people of all ages can learn and worship and sing together. And so know that that space is available for you. And if you need to move closer to hear better or to see better, If you need to move uh, carefully back to the coloring table in order to pray that way or listen better with your hands busy, you are welcome to do that. And as we get into the reflection time, we will be having some uh, ways to connect so that being intergenerational doesn't just mean that there's people gathered in the same room together, but that there are actually people learning together. And we'll have uh, some different ways of talking about church when we get to that point. With all of that in mind, I invite you to greet one another using the words that are in your bulletin. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome, dear. Our 
I invite you to please join me in our gathering prayer. O bread of heaven, come down. Come down and fill us with your Holy Spirit. For your Spirit satisfies like no other. We hunger and thirst for you this morning and long to be nurtured in your love and forgiveness. So we come to the sacred time and place where our hungers are finally and fully satisfied as only your bread can do. We will wait and listen for your leading in this hour. Amen. Well, as we think about what it is that church is and exists for, we're going to start with a really deep theological question this morning, which is, which Winnie the Pooh character are you showing up as today? And we have a picture, some pictures, for you to choose from uh, in case it's been a while since you've been able to watch Winnie the Pooh and have forgotten who some of the main, main uh, ones are. And so take a moment, and it's just today. This does not have to be which Winnie the Pooh character are you for your whole life. It's just right now. Who are you showing up as? And if there's somebody near you that you can turn to and uh, say who you are today and why, what is the trait of that character um, that makes you feel like that this morning? All right, it sounds like most of you have had a time to share. So I'm wondering, where are the um, rabbits? Was anybody showing up as rabbit today? You have some rabbits. What were the traits of rabbit? I hear something. <laughs> Somebody might have to repeat it back like a game of telephone. <laughs> Hard workers. What did you say? <laughs> did you say crotchety? <laughs> Who are the Eeyores for today? Some Eeyores. Yeah. What was it about Eeyore? Low energy. Low energy. That's kind of what Eeyore is known for. We all have Eeyore days. <laughs> How about the Kangas? Some Kangas. What were the Kanga traits? Motherly, something else. Did you also say motherly? Mama. Mama. Yeah. An owl. Any owls? Was owl not up there? Well, that is, that is too bad. <laughs> Who are we missing? Oh, piglet. Piglet. Who were the piglets? Some piglets. What was it about piglet? Cheerful, and what'd you say? Happy. Happy. Nice. What'd you say? Energized. Nice. And how about Tigger? Do we have Tiggers? <laughs> what was the, uh, what was Tigger? Bounce. What else? Reckless. <laughs> I heard a couple things. What was it? Unsettled. Unsettled. Exuberant. Nice. One of the things that I notice about Tigger is that he is uh, famously unique. Right? He has his song about being the only Tigger, um, and he's the only one, and he's really proud of being the only one. Uh, 
and just living into that. And so I wondered if that was, might have shown up for any of you. And one of the things that happens for Tigger is that later on he gets lonely. I know, it is sad. And he um, kind of gets tired of being the only one. And so he starts out looking for his family. And in the Tigger movie, he writes a letter uh, to some Tiggers that he may or may not know <laughs> exist. And uh, he's hoping that they will find them. And what happens is all the other uh, creatures in the Hundred Acre Wood, they find Tigger's letter and they feel sad for Tigger. And they decide that they are going to pretend to be Tigger's to make him feel less lonely. And even if you haven't seen this movie, you can predict what happens. Um, it's chaos, and the rest of them are trying to pretend to be Tiggers, and they eventually get found out. And Tigger realizes uh, that these people were not Tiggers. But he also realizes that these people have been his family the whole time. And the reason that we're looking at that today is because it's a really good example of how early Christians viewed their life together. They were um, actually often mocked by non-Christians for practicing what uh, people called fictive kinship, meaning that they treated each other like they were family even though they weren't. And... Um, we see it, we see it, it shows up when uh, the Bible talks about sister and brother, right? When it says sisters and brothers in Christ. It wasn't just a formality, that's how that they were uh, trying to live. And so in this time when Jesus' followers were kind of ostracized and maybe a bit lonely, they figured out how to build this new family for each other. Today we sometimes talk about chosen family which is language that we get from the LGBTQ community, who also uh, has had to build their own relationships for each other. And so we're going to read from Hebrews 13 today, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5 and then down to 16. And I invite you to listen for the word of God for your heart today. Friends, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Remember those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For Jesus has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Words of wisdom for us today. I have been noticing on social media that there is a growing trend toward de-influencing. And influencing, of course, is uh, influencers who spend time on social media selling products. And it can be a profitable way to create a livelihood. De-influencers have been doing the opposite. So they have been showing how different camera angles are used in order to make yourself look really athletic and fit. And so maybe it's not just those protein shakes that people are selling after all. Or they might show the filters that are being used that kind of makes everybody's skin look all glowy. And so maybe it's not just that face cream that people are selling. And I see this as a really important correction to an entire culture that has been built around consumerism and individualism, 
which are things that promise to make us happy but very often leave us empty instead. The author of Hebrews is doing a bit of de-influencing. The author of Hebrews is also living through uh, the reality that has often been the reality when people are caring mostly about themselves. And so in Hebrews, they are advocating for something different. They're advocating for a world, or at least a portion of the world, where people choose to care for each other. They're advocating for something like the Hundred Acre Woods, or like church. I've been thinking about this this past uh, few weeks in particular because our church leadership teams, our treasurer and our HR team and our staff teams, have been putting together the 2025 budget. And what that means is I have spent a lot of time in the past few weeks talking about money and the church, which is always a mixed bag. Right? There is so much room for frustrations and fears and resentments when we start talking about money, even in the church. But there is also a lot of room for grace, which I think is why the Bible talks about money so often. It has shown up in the past several passages that we have had, not because we were looking for those. It's just there. Money is a really concrete way that we talk about value. We might not be able to put a price tag on love or on community, but we can tell what people or organizations prioritize by what they're willing to spend money on. And I want to be clear, because talking about money is such a mixed bag, that I'm not necessarily talking about amounts. Sometimes what we are able to give or to spend on worthy causes is absolutely constrained by where we are in life. But when we encounter the Bible talking about money, it comes with this same idea of mutuality. When the Bible talks about money, it says love each other means more than just having a warm, fuzzy feeling for each other. It means take care of each other. Here at UCC Longmont, we have benefited from a tremendous amount of generosity. We have inherited not just the faith of the people who have come before us, but the resources, the building, financial gifts of people who have come before us. And when we think about all of those things that we have inherited, I hope that it maybe kind of gives you chills. Because these are people who lived so long ago who believed in the value of a spiritual community. This is people who lived a long time ago who believed that something would be lost if this church ceased to exist. And we've lived into that here. Most of our budget today comes from donations from people who are currently here. And the thing that is always striking about uh, church budgets is that people who don't go to children's church themselves maybe don't even have kids in children's church, advocate for spending money on that when they make budget decisions. People who are joining online and may never even come in person send in donations because they believe this flesh and blood community matters. Even though there might be a flashier, better YouTube service that they could be watching, this is what they want to see continue. There are people who donate because they believe that being a spiritual voice for nonviolence matters. That being a spiritual voice for LGBTQ rights matters. That just coming together and asking the question, why church, matters. So over the next few months, or the next few weeks, you'll have some opportunities to think about financial stewardship here at UCC Longmont, and I know There are very few of us who love talking about money, and I think we might as well just be honest (laughs) about that. I have been in ministry for almost 20 years, and I have never arrived at October, which is sort of the traditional point for budgeting and stewardship, and had everybody go, yay! (laughs) But I actually do love it. 
And some of you have heard me say that before. And the reason that I love it is because it is hard. And anytime something is hard, it's an invitation to deepen our spirituality. It's an invitation to connect our inner spiritual lives to our outer lived lives. It's an invitation to say this matters. This little corner of the world, this small pocket of the hundred acre woods matters. Right? Church isn't just about buying or selling a product. If it was, we'd just put price tags on all of the things. It's about living a vision of kinship. A vision of saying, your worries matter to me, even if they aren't my worries. Or your dreams matter to me, even if they aren't my dreams. One of the things about this community is that this is not a place where we are interested in guilting anybody about how they give or what they give. Uh, You will hear more this year. We're not even asking you to share what you plan to give. The invitation is just to prayerfully consider, prayerfully consider how your financial and volunteer and all of the other aspects of stewardship contribute to this community. Outside of family life, whether that is chosen family or biological family, church really is one of the few places where I see people intentionally coming together to care. Just to care. Like People walk in the door and they're like, let's Let's care about each other. That is an uncommon way to live. And while we're not always perfect at it, I think we do a really good job. I think we do a really good job of coming together and loving and being loved. And so I want to close our reflection time today with a video. This is a video a church member put together, and I just asked them to answer the question, why church? Hi, I'm Phyllis Rostigus. When I was asked, why church, my first reaction was this. This is Jet. He was two when we joined. John and I wanted him to have a church family, to have kind people of all generations around him whom he could talk with, get to know, and learn from as he grew. John was born and raised in the UCC tradition. I wasn't, but I learned that being a minority female of odd orientation and gender didn't disqualify me. Religion, like many things, can't be done alone. Church community acts as a check and keeps my faith thoughts sane through connection. Church gave me access to classes, books, people who are willing to ask questions with me and all kinds of opportunities to put my faith into action. This church works. We've done rebuilding work after hurricanes, floods, and earthquakes. I've worked with a lot of people here through various disasters, looked poverty, fear, and historic inequity in the face, and said, yes, that happened. Now, I think we can do something to make it better. This church elected me as their moderator. They've allowed me to lead, to be on council, in pastoral relations committee, and on the nominating committee. I even rewrote our governance. So, far from disqualifying me, this church saw my gifts and gave me work. Church connects us, empowers us, gives volume to our voice and our collected faith and hope, not only in each other, but in the world and the people around us. There are so many sources for what's wrong with the world. Here, we're instructed to put our minds, hearts, and strength together to address it. And I'm grateful. And that's why church. I trust that many of you found some things that you connected to Uh, in Phyllis's video, and this uh, month you'll have more opportunities to share why church for you. But for now, let's take a moment to return to that question that we asked at the very beginning, which was, why church? Why are you here? And we're just going to hold that 
again with a moment of pause, a moment of letting our hearts be heard. For all that it is, God, we thank you for church.
Good morning. Please join us in saying the parts marked for all. We are here because Jesus has invited us. Strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always mixed company that Jesus invites to his table, where in bread and juice he meets us. And through him, we who are different are joined to each other. So come, not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come, trusting Jesus invites you, just as you are. Imagine being loved so much by someone that they see through the parts that you try to hide. But they don't just see them with the eye of judgment, but they see where they emerge from, from the innocent place that may have created these walls and these barriers and these blocks to our truest self. But this person sees them at their core. They see you. That is the table that Jesus has prepared for us. He went to this upper room with his friends, knowing that they would not be able to meet the moment of their greatest tension. And yet he invited them there, and he broke bread with them, seeing through all of it to the core, just like we have been seen to our core. The beautiful core from the beginning where all things are seen as good. And it's from that place that he was able to take bread and to break it and say, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, at some point in the meal, maybe after dinner, he looked at them again and saw all of those things and loved them so much. And so he said to them, this, this cup, it's like my very blood, my very life, my very love poured out for you to overflowing. Each time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. When we celebrate communion here at UCC Longmont, we celebrate in the spirit of love and belonging. And all are welcome at this table. We serve gluten-free bread and juice so that we can all share from a common uh, cup and plate. We also invite those of you who are joining from home, if you are observing communion with us, know that in the way that all things are united, you are part of this community and this table. And so we invite you to come, to take, and to eat. Stations in the back and two up front, and all things have been made ready for you. Bread of life, broken for you.
Please join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. God, thank you for the ordinary made holy again today. May we be renewed by the simple taste of a simple meal. May we recognize again the ordinary holiness of life here and in all things. Amen. her and she and hers. Um, a very special welcome to everybody this morning, uh, to visitors and guests. Welcome back to those who haven't been here for a while. We're so glad you're here. The youth group is going to tear in the corn tonight. <laughs> Reach out to Rob if you'd like to join the group. On Sunday, November 3rd, uh, we'll observe All Saints Day with a visual tribute to honor our loved ones who have died. If you'd like a loved one remembered in church, please send a picture with their name to admin at UCC, it's A-D-I-M-I-N, at UCCLongmont.org by October 24th. You can also find other announcements and happenings in the bulletin to keep you connected. If you would like to support UCC Longmont financially, you can give online at ucclongmont.org forward slash giving or use the offering boxes in the back of the sanctuary. There's two of them back there. Um, we are grateful for all generosity. The Dream Team Offer Team Grant Program is intended to provide grants to fulfill dreams of the congregation, often beyond the reach of traditional funding through the church budget. The next deadline is October 15th. Please see the UCC Longmont website for more information and the application. Thank you all and have a great week. You'll notice in your bulletin that there is an opportunity uh, for a hospitality project and that project has unfolded a bit uh, more quickly than was anticipated and in the interest of living up to our scripture passage and showing hospitality to strangers, I'm gonna invite Marilyn Decker forward to tell us a little bit about that project uh, as the timeline has been moved up and we're looking to meet an urgent need.
Good morning. That's <laughs> okay. So I had a very vivid dream one Saturday night in early June of this year. At church the next morning, I was still wrapped in my dream world. After the service, I told Reverend Amelia about my dream. The dream was that I was standing here, right in front of you, all of you, and preaching a sermon about helping the homeless with basic furnishings for an apartment. Don't worry, no sermon from me. But I wondered if we could do something similar to what we had done many years ago when we gathered furnishings for the previously homeless. I could see a sort of gleam in Reverend Amelia's eyes as I was talk telling her about it, but she said, why don't you let it percolate for a while and see what happens? Well, the desire to help the previously unhoused never went away. I contacted HOPE, which stands for Homeless Outreach Providing Encouragement, and they said they were expecting to house six to eight of their clients in October and would very much appreciate our help. So I met with Reverend Amelia. She gave me the go-ahead, and we came up with the title Housewarming Project for Previously Unhoused. I like that title because we, don't, we know that the homeless people here in Longmont are our neighbors, and so we want to shower them with new or like new basic furnishings for their new home, just as we might for our own family and friends. As a result of talking with a caseworker from Hope, he and I chose to help a client they are all worried about, who is an older man, partially disabled, who uses a cane and wears a helmet because he falls a lot. There is some urgency to, to provide a double bed for this man. I just found out that he is moving in tomorrow. And I apologize for the short notice, but I believe me, I did my best, and this is where we are. Um, so this man will be sleeping on a mat provided by Hope, plus his sleeping bag. And as you can imagine, this will be difficult for him and probably has been difficult for him for a long time due to his health. If you have items in your homes or storage units or garages or basements that could be useful to someone who has nothing please donate it to this project. So I've asked my husband to help today, as always. <laughs> He's going to hold up this poster. And on it, you will see the outline of a one-bedroom apartment and tags. On the tags are names of items that are needed. If you're able to donate an item, please take the tag, and then I won't worry about it. I will know that the item is taken care of. If you would prefer to donate money to the project, there are tags for that too. With the funds donated, I will go thrifting or look for items on sale and spend your money as wisely as possible. Another area to help will be trucks to deliver the furniture and other goods to the client's apartment. And finally, there is an opportunity to be a telephone buddy to the person we are helping, checking on him once a week or so. There is a sense of community in homeless encampments, and it has been reported that once a person moves into their own apartment, they feel very isolated. So a friendly call helps them adjust to their new home. 
we will have to move fairly fast, bringing donations to the art lounge. Is that right? Okay, that's a good place because Hope's client is moving in so soon. I think two weeks will be a reasonable time to collect items. I'll be outside the main doors here after the service with the poster and tags. Thank you so much in advance for considering this and for your generosity. Let us rise in spirit and sing number 210 in our sing hymnal, There's Bread for the Journey. There's bread for the journey and friends for the way. There's hope for tomorrow and love for today. The cup of forgiveness, so blessings release to heal and renew us and And as we turn to this time of benediction, I'm going to invite Iris forward to begin our blessing for us. Hello, my name is Iris Timpson, and I'm reading pages 28 and 29 from The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and dutiful. We are, we'll emerge battered but beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, afraid and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Friends, go out to be the light in all of the ways that you are the light. Go out to share the love that you find here in all of the ways that you share the love that you find here. And as you do this, know that the light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you, and wherever you are, God is. Go in peace.
If anyone is sticking around for the volunteer session, it will be in the sanctuary. Okay. Yep.